Hey everybody, welcome to PBI Radio. It's Chris Guns, and my guest today is 7-0, Javier Flores, El Chino. Young guy, up and coming, could bang with both hands. You're going to hear a lot about him. Let's meet him. Javier Flores and his manager, Jose Colon. Thank you guys for joining me, PBI Radio. How you doing? Good, man. Tell me, Javier, where were you born? Well, yo nací en Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. And what was it like? What was it like over there growing up? It's como era creciendo ya en tu cuento. Porque mis padres siempre fueron me educaron de una manera. Sí, crecí yo. And what did he say, Jose? Uh, he said his parents uh, educated him as a youth, you know, took good care of him and um, saw him, you know, like right from wrong. And um, he, he was a, a well educated kid with his parents. He did. You know, like the took care of him and he was uh, real obedient. Mm-hmm. And who got you in the boxing? Y quién te metió en el boxeo? Ahí yo fui, se me fue gustando porque mi amistad de, yo vi que le gustaba mucho el boxeo y, y cuando yo lo grabé, me gustó mucho a mí también. Y hasta que lo practiqué, empecé viéndolo en la TV, al grande campeón en Boricua. Y hasta que decidí practicarlo. Y, y vi que desarrolló un talento en mí. Todo el mundo me decía que tenía talento y, y terminé siendo boxeador. I used to uh, see my friends used to practice it in, the, in, the, in his neighborhood. So he started practicing with his friends. And uh, he, he noticed that he was like real talented and that he was real good. He started liking it. He started watching other boxers on TV, Puerto Rican fighters that he admired, like you know, Trinidad and people like that. Uh, and uh, he started practicing. He took it a little more serious, and he he found out that he could go real far in it. Mm-hmm. And you had a great amateur career. You're 68 and three, 32 knockouts as an amateur. That's a great record. What do you What do you remember about your your amateur career and what stands out to you the most? What are you most proud of? Well, I remember my first amateur fight, uh, it only lasted like 25 seconds. Y me acuerdo de muchas, porque fueron unas peleas grandes que nunca voy a olvidar. I remember a lot of them. Um, there was a, a few of them that I will never forget. It was real big fan. Y gracias a esta pelea, una pelea llena de acción, este, que agradaba al público, y desde ahí, pues, de los oficiales, este, me fui con, a conocer. Uh, there was a few fights that I remember that, you know, it was full of action pack, like, real action, and um, I was victorious in a lot of them, and um, I let the public, the public started liking me. Mm-hmm. Y a la gente, pues, le gustaba mi estilo de pelea. Y, y así poco a poco, pues, fui trayendo mi, mi fanático. Mm-hmm. The people used 
to the people like my style. They like the way I fight. And um, well, I kept carrying myself like that in the ring, aggressive. Mm -hmm. And and the people started liking me. That's awesome. And, and and what made you decide to turn pro when you did, and not try to get into the Olympics? You had a great record. Looks like it seems like you could have made the Olympics. Maybe. How come you didn't try? Remember who you fought in your first fight when you did discern, decide to turn pro? And what happened and where it was? My first fight was in a town called Moca in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. It was with a young man named Josué. And soon after the fight, we became friends. I became friends with him right after the fight, simply because of my attitude. I'm an easy person to get along with. I don't take this personally. This is just a sport that I do. the hurt business you know <laughs> someone's got to get hurt sometime how, how did you feel Javier fighting for the first time without the headgear and, and the smaller gloves did you did you feel the power in your fist Siempre 
ha sido positivo, lo soy positivo y me preparé, me preparé demasiado, un esfuerzo que estuve cinco meses queriendo ser profesional y no parecía contrincante hasta que apareció y se fue un tiempo de cinco meses para debutar y cuando peleé pues, era una condición increíble my first fight was incredible I was in great condition I I had enough time to train it was a time in my career where people didn't even want to fight me and it took like five months for me to get a fight wow. but with my condition you know I'm here no, y I'm sorry. Desde el top, mi primera vez, este, me di cuenta que, que hay que entrenar para lograr lo que uno quiere, que hay que sacrificarse. Desde mi primer fight, I understood that you have to be in great condition. So that's why I stay in great condition because you have to make sacrifice. It sounds pretty mature for a young guy. Tell. Jose, when did when did you first start hearing about Javier? When did you first meet him? I first met him like two years ago. Yeah. Like two years ago. And um I met him through a mutual friend at the gym. Uh I used to have another fighter that uh I used to um uh, take good care of and um he got lazy on me so I had to let him go. Mm -hmm. So uh The people in the gym notice how I work with my fighters and how I dedicate them time and I, I, I take them in like family and I make them comfortable where they don't have no problems in their mind while they're training. And um, they told me about Javier in Puerto Rico and um, they told me, listen, this kid in Puerto Rico is knocking everybody out. He just don't have a manager, he don't have a promoter and, you know, he don't have fun you know he's under you know he's poor mm -hmm. yeah so but he had had it. so i spoke with him on the phone and i i fell in love with the kid immediately like he don't cuss he's like a down-to-earth person real mellow he don't have he don't have a voice tone like he don't raise his voice you know he's real calm cool and collective So I told him, uh, this is what I could do for you, you know? You come with me, we fight in the States, and I can make you a champion. And he believed in me, I believe in him, and this is where we are now. Now, Javier, tell me, tell me about the time you went to New Jersey to spar with a kid. You didn't know this kid. He was 10-0 with six knockouts, and you beat him up pretty good. And later you find out it was Glenn Tapia. Tell me about that day. How, how'd that... How'd you get to spar with Glenn Tapia? Oh. 
for a fun person in New Jersey, and um, they wanted to uh, to see what Javier was about, what's all the hype, what everybody talking about this kid, they just came from Puerto Rico, named Javier Flores. So they brought us to New Jersey to start with a, a young guy. And um, we start and I, I looked at real good. And um, when we left, we we found out who the guy was and uh, he was a professional fighter. He had over 10 fights, several knockouts. And um, we looked at real good and that's our session. Yeah, now he's now he was a hundred and thirty and four as an amateur himself, so he's not a slouch at all. I mean, totally, totally legit has a great chance of being a champion himself. And you just destroyed him in the gym. What were the people saying in the who witnessed this? Uh, there was who is this kid? What's his name again? I told him his name is Javier Flores, and they must have looked him up. They realized he was only had four fights mm-hmm. as a pro. Yeah. Or not. So, he was so young. <laughs> yeah. What did you think, Javier, when you when you heard about who you did that to? ¿Qué tú pensabas cuando tú viste que el nombre de quién era ese chamaco? Ahí me di cuenta de que yo estoy a un buen nivel en el boxeo. Right there and then I realized that I was in another level in boxing. Mm-hmm. Y desde ese día te, me motivé mucho. And so that day I motivated myself even more. Yeah. Pero a pesar de, de que lo hice bien. But besides that I looked at good. Este... actually wanted to go and spar with Floyd Mayweather and help him prepare for his fight with Victor Ortiz so you obviously want to train with the best why didn't that happen how come you didn't get a chance to go spar with Floyd porque no te vino la oportunidad para contar con Floyd Mayweather para yo lo prepararse para Ortiz getting attention from Telemundo. How's that feel to to be getting attention from something like that already? And in your 
I'm sorry. Continue. Well, I'll, I'll leave it in God's hands, whatever he wants. Well, mm -hmm. And in your sixth... If my destination is boxing, then that's what I need. It'll be a lot of good fight. Yep. And exciting when there's a big puncher like, like Javier around. And in your sixth pro fight, you fought Shaka Moore. Stopped him in the seventh round. Being a big puncher, people worry about... How far in a fight you're going to take your power. Can you take it late into a fight? But you didn't feel any problems in round seven, did you? Okay. Siempre me pregunté por qué llegó hasta el 7. I always ask myself, how he got to the 7. Y pues, ahí entendí que, que Chacal Moore, una persona con una experiencia fuerte. And I understood that because Chacal Moore is a fighter with experience, strong. Y me hizo fallar mucho golpe. He made me miss a lot of punches. Hasta que, pues, pude lograrlo. Until I managed to land a few of my heavy punches. En el séptimo round. En el séptimo round. Mm -hmm. Pero que fue una gran pelea para mí. But it was a great fight for me. Y me sirvió de mucha experiencia. And it worked for me for, as experience. Mm -hmm. And now you're 7-0, seven, oh, 7 KOs in 8 fights. Your last fight was in January, and it was ruled a no contest. What happened in that fight? Is that why is that why you're out of the ring since January? Yes. Yeah. That's why he's out of the ring since January. Until October twelfth. Mm-hmm. 
and you're a southpaw, are you naturally left-handed or is it just your stance in the ring? <laughs> Yeah, and you started working with the great trainer Ice John Scully, not not the not the best time for John Scully right now. He's just coming off his loss with Chad Dawson. What do, what do you think when when you first met John Scully? What made you guys mesh, and what made you know that he was the one for you? It would be now, John Scully. Y como tú sabes que es eh, eh, yo en realidad no, no lo conozco muy bien, pero todo el mundo me habla bien de él, de que sabe mucho. Me en reality, me personally, don't know John Scully much, but everybody that knows him has spoke to me about him very well. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and train now with John Scully. And uh, he noticed a few things that defect that I have that he's going to correct. And he was correcting them. Y yo te di que era cierto lo que me decía, que me hacía falta algunos detalles para completar bueno, mi, mi forma de negociador. And I myself realized that it's true what he was telling me. So we're working on correcting that so I can become a better fighter. Mm -hmm. Yo pienso que con él voy a aprender lo que me falta. I believe that I'm going to learn what what I need to learn with him Para ser un más completo. to be a more complete fighter. Y espero que todo salga bien con él, que y pues yo puedo seguir mejorando. I hope everything goes well with us, so I can keep improving. Y desde mañana pues. Empiezo mi, mi campamento de entrenamiento con John Scott. And starting tomorrow, um, I start training for my fight with John Scott. Mm -hmm. And you also signed with Gary Shaw? Is your. Firmaste con Gary Shaw. Si, yo tuve una cita con Gary. Yes, today I had an appointment with Gary. Y estuvimos hablando varias horas. And we had a couple of hours talking. Y negociando el contrato hasta que llegamos a un acuerdo. We negotiated the contract until we came, we came to an agreement. Y se dio posible de de Javier Flores. And it became possible for Javier Flores permanecer en la compañía. To start with the company. Y estuvimos hablando y nos llevamos muy bien. And we stood talking. And we got along good. Con personas, como amigos. Y como hermanos que somos. And we spoke like friends. And family. family and brothers that we are. In the love of Christ. That's it. And John Scully is one of the best trainers in the world. And nobody looks out for their fighters like, like Gary Shaw. So I think you're in great hands. Did you ever see yeah. did you ever see John Scully plank yet? John Scully ahora mismo el mejor y Gary Shaw quiere mucho a sus peleadores. Tú nunca has pensado que se va a last party said? Did you ever see John Scully plank? You might not even know what it is. Wait till you see it though. Just tell him to watch out for when John Scully planks. Tú nunca lo viste con plank. Tú sabes lo que plank cuando se acuerda uno a acostar a los <laughs> What's that? Yeah. No, he did. Did he ever try it? Oh, oh planking? Yeah, planking. <laughs> 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 it's tough. <laughs> yeah, I think that face for everybody. 
<laughs> it's hard to do. And and what did you think of the the Chad Dawson Andre Ward fight? I believe that Andre Ward is an excellent fighter. Y que ahí lo que en verdad ganó fue la dedicación, la disciplina de Andre Ward. And in that fight, the one that won was the discipline, the dedication of Andre Ward. Porque peleando, lo vi, esa pelea, la vi y, y de verla, pues. Noté que, que Andrew Ward no, no juega con este deporte. He seen the fight and he seen Andrew Ward and he know that the Andrew Ward do not play in the sport. Yeah, yeah. Y eso fue lo que lo que lo hace ver a él como una estrella. And that's what make him look like a star. Mm -hmm. So God, so his willingness, his wanting to fight his dream. Yeah. ahead to uh, the Canelo Josecito fight. What do, you, what do you think of that one? Asking you to make your picks, I guess. Esa pelea va a ser interesante porque el fight is going to be very interesting because son dos peleadores que que vienen subiendo con ansia, con hambre de poseo. Two fighters that's coming with hungry, hungry for the boxing. Yo viéndolo desde mi punto de vista, from my point of view, Canelo debe ganar, pero Canelo should be the winner. Josecito es muy peligroso. But Josecito is very dangerous. Yeah. How about Sergio pero, Martinez? Buena yeah. pelea dura para los dos. It's going to be a very good fight for both of them. Yeah, let's hope. let's hope so, and for the fans too. What do you think of Sergio Martinez and Chavez Jr.? get a, your thought on Lucas Matisse. You might be in the ring with him one day. What did you think of his fight with a Jose on Showtime? Tiene una buena posición en el boxeo. 
Yeah, it's a it's a deep division and in and around the the division. Is there anybody that you really want to see yourself in the ring with? Like within, I'll say within a year from now. Like, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself competing with what kind of names? And, and you you hooked up with John Scully, hooked up with Gary Shaw, and you already got a fight scheduled for October. Tell me about that. Who, what, what's the date of the fight? And where's it going to be? The hook up with John Scully. The film on Gary Shaw. It will be on the 27th of October. What do you think of that? I think that it's all what I wanted. This doesn't excite you. Nothing will, man. And, and what do you what do you want to say to your fans? You're gonna be getting a lot more fans now that you're you're gonna be seen by a lot more people. I'm assuming under under. How do your fans show you love? Do they, can they follow you on Twitter? You on Twitter at all? I think he's going to need a fan page soon. 
creo que tú vas a necesitar una página de fanática, tú pronto. Javier, Javier El Chino Flores, good luck, my man. Appreciate your time, and we'll be watching you and how you develop under the master falaya Ice John Scully. Appreciate it. Hola. And And Jose, you did a great job translating. Appreciate it, man. And thank you very much. All right, Thank guys. You. Take it easy. I'll be in touch. All right, my man.